Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mixed Miles and Merman. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, quick little video on a, a push sovereign um, lawnmower with a Briggs and Strat. Failing to start, I don't think even primes. Um, picked up the job lot last, last winter. It doesn't do anything at all. Let's get it out on the old garden, have a quick little look, see what we can't look at and see what we can't see. Try and figure it out and then bring it into the shed and try and get it to run and at least do something. That'd be brilliant. If it's your first time in watching Mixed Murs and Merman, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty, let's check out this little sovereign lawnmower with Briggs and Stratton flathead engine on the top and try and get it to run. Right, let's have a mooch. I'm on a mission today, people. I'm on a mission. The tarpaulin's come back. I'm uh, starting to get through them, so. We're off the cylinders for now. Look at the state of this little puppy, look. It ain't a very well little machine at all. It ain't very well at all. It's all greasy, oily, yucky, mucky, and horrible. It's not a particularly good, in, a particularly big mower. You know, it, it'll do some on a turn. It's as simple as that. It'd be a cheap old mower if we can get it to run. There is petrol in the tank. I have just checked that. But straight off the bat, it's not. It's not even priming. I can hear a funny noise. It could be primer bulb. No idea. But that is all it's doing. That ain't no good to no one. Let's get it up on the bench, have a quick little look, try and get it to run. Right, here it is, little Briggs and Stratton flathead. Uh, nothing to look at. A little bit of paint flaking as they all do. Quick little spray off. I'll get rid of some of this muck and some of this dirt and grime, but whilst that's just sitting there, I can just eat into it. And uh, just to make it a little bit more appealing to the eye. As I always say, um, the appearance of a broken machine, see a bit of paint flaking there? Appearance to a machine is 99% of the sale. Now, it's not something you're looking to doing a, a revamp on. If it's cheap enough, someone will take it away. It's as simple as that. So if I can repair it for next to nothing, get it serviced up, it should still fetch a relative price in the, in the current market, but it looks like it's been tipped up, which is not uncommon for these little tiny Briggses. Someone's been in because the air filter is on back to front. I can already see that. So let's have a little look, shall we? Let's see what we can't find. So straight off the bat, it was not even priming. I want to remove the air filter cover it should go round the other way. It belongs that way like that, okay? Uh, as you can see, someone has tipped up, it's full of oil. Oh, and we got, I don't know. We've got a couple of springs here. Let me show you this. This is not how you set them up, but this is um, how somebody set, set this um, little lawnmower up. That's how they got the spring set up. This little tiny spring here should be on this tab here, not all the way forward here, so. Yeah, someone's, someone's been playing. I might have put another spring on here. We should wait and see what happens, but they've possibly mucked about of it to try and keep it running. Maybe that's what they did, but we shall, we shall figure that out in a little tiny while. Have no fear. Let's put that back down there and get you lot where you need to be. Lovely. Uh, so it wasn't priming. So first thing I want to do is just put a drop of petrol in there because maybe um, it's just below the limit and it don't want to run. There is petrol in there, like I say, but let's just put a bit in just to wet the whistle. That's all we're doing. Now let's see if it'll prime. There it goes, just thinking about it. Here you go. So now primes, that's good. So we'll go for a fire up then, see what it does. But it's going to want. Uh, a clean air filter or a new air filter. I just want the springs looked at, definitely. That's 100%. And then we'll go for mess. Now we have a priming carb. Sounds to be priming quite well as well, which is good. Let's uh, give it a pull, see what it do. Let's try and encourage it to run a bit further. 
And what I do is I'll uh, come around and prime that bulb up. Okay, so it does run, it does, it does not run right. Um, and that's half because of that spring is nowhere near where it needs to be. I dare say the carburetor is actually dirty on this and I, it, it'll probably go forward and have a new carburetor gasket and diaphragm. Only because generally these little machines, once they've been tipped up, once they've been left for a little while, they tend to need that, you know? Um, but without a doubt, the first thing to do is, sit, is sort this little spring out. That's the first thing to do. That way we then get a baseline on on what we're doing. I need to clean the air filter out as well. This little tiny spring, that don't belong there. Someone's hooked it all the way back here. Now it is a shame because these springs are not cheap, 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 and you've got to wait for them. So let's just bring that back a touch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bit of a, a fix on here. Oh, come on, that's it, off you come. So there's the spring there, as you can see, uh, well and truly knackered. I might have a spare one, let me go and double check, two secs. Right, I've got one. A uh, quick little um, spring change then. Now these little tiny springages, they're very, very simple. They've got two little tiny loops on them. See that? Two little tiny loops. And one loop will go on my little tiny curly pigtail just here. Let me bring it down, because you'll say, oh, you showed me, but it didn't show me. I know. So one little tiny loop will go just here, and the other little loop will go through the little tiny slot on that and go onto there. So let me just show you, it's, it's, it's simple. Push it in tip it over a bit and drag it back on itself. I'm doing this one-handed, by the way, so not the easiest of things to do, one-handed, especially with a pull cord recall system in a way. Literally, get hold of it, there you go. Right, that goes onto there. That's that one, and then this one. Literally, it's gonna go through that hole there and come back on itself. Just so it locks into place, two seconds. I'm doing it one-handed, so it's not easy. Can't get the camera right in close when you want to. There you go, right in there. And I come back. Right, there you go. Right, that's it. That's where that belongs. That's how it goes. Simple as that. How easy, I can, if I can do it one handed, you can do it with two, right? So that's where it goes. And if you need to speed the revs up on these little machines, you just uh, tip that towards the front. But uh, you, don't, you don't want it running, running its head off. So that's all that's required, I think, just to make sure that this engine should run right. However, it's not going to run right with, um, with that air filter on there. So we're going to get rid of that. That can go for a burn, and I've got in me drawer of many things, although they're not uh, genuine, they're not genuine. I've got some new air filters all the way from Wuhan. The Wuhan filter. Give it a quick little clean off the old air box. Wipe off the excess oil and dirt and grime that's on there. Because you're only going to put it in there. Now some people do all the air filters up you can spray them with a little bit of oil just to help, but do you know what, for what it is, it's just there to catch the dust. So in, in my opinion, and it is only my opinion, so don't shoot me down in, in flames in the comment section. In my opinion, I don't bother, right? But lots of people do, lots of people don't. It's as simple as that, okay? New air filter goes in, bish bash bosh. So we're already eating, eating into money here, okay? But you can, you can literally just clean the air filter out with a bit of clean petrol take it out and put it in a little tiny tub, put in a bit of, bit of neat petrol, give it a good squeeze and a clean out, and then soak all the, squeeze all the petrol out of it. That will clean a, a, a filter. Uh, you know, is, is it the best method? Probably not, or best just for what it costs just to put a new one in, but the choice is yours, people. So, because I'm uh, gonna be selling this machine, I would like the machine to be sold as, you know, working and, and someone's actually gone through a bit of trouble to look at it, so. Right, I'm, I'm, as I'm working, I'm always cleaning. This machine's absolutely full of grass down the bottom here, full of oil and bits and bobs. I'm gonna get my air compressor on it in a little while. But I'm always cleaning it because uh, eventually when it goes outside, it'll look a million bucks. It, it won't, but um, it's what it is. But it'll do something, right? It'll do something like that. Right, so now we've had a new spring put on, which we, we can now adjust. Uh, a new air fill. Right, let's now see if it doesn't now start and run off its own back or if it doesn't need further work on my carburetor. So it's priming. <coughs> That's good. Pull a dead man in, give it a start. So 
So don't sound very happy. But what I'm going to do, I'm now going to speed the engine up. Okay, so even by me speeding that engine up, it didn't make a lot of difference. That tells me the carburetor does need looking at, okay? So unfortunately, I've got to do uh, what's called a, a gasket and diaphragm change on this possibly, and also um, a carburetor clean. Now, if you have seen these videos before, then feel free just to skip ahead to the next part. But if you haven't seen it, or if you do just like watching me, then uh, stick around. I'll get this carburetor cleaned very, very quickly on the bench. I'm not gonna bother going down to, uh, down to the, uh, my carburetor cleaning station. I'll do it just here and uh, we'll get on and do that right now. Right, so a quick little Briggs & Stratton Classic flathead um, carburetor clean. Um, everyone's done them, everyone knows how to do them. Apart from those who are watching who either don't know how to do them or have sent, have sent them before but just like doing it. Half inch bolt to be undone just there and a three eighths or 10 mil if you can get away with it uh, on the front, okay? So they're simple. Remove them, put them to one side out of the way and don't lose them because you need them for later on. Now this little tiny carby will now just pull out very, very slightly and on the top, as you pull it out, you'll see the linkage is still attached to the top. All you've got to do is tip the carburetor over like so and then lift the linkage out and the whole carburetor will, he says, literally, there he goes. Where's that? Oh, someone's, someone's put a, a doofer on here. Someone's actually put this on back to front. So someone has definitely been in, okay? Let me show you. So someone's been in. This here should have a little Z bend on here, this end, uh, but it hasn't. This has got the curly pigtail. This has actually got um, the Z bend this end here. So let me just show you, let me take it off. I can't do it one-handed, that's just, that's just asking for trouble, right? Uh, let me take it off and I'll show you what I mean. So I've got to lift it up now, this way, and force that linkage out which is not gonna be an easy thing to do because it don't, it don't wanna come out. It goes right, okay. So now I can now remove this one here, right. Now let me show you what I mean, show you how it was, that way you know for future reference, okay. So this is how it was actually sat on the, on the carby, you see. Now in fact, this actually goes around the other way. That bit there, that long tail, that goes onto that little piece just up there. Let me fit it on there. That bit actually goes on to there. Whoop, dropped it. I don't want to ruin these springs that I just fitted. That goes onto there like that, okay? And then that little tiny Z bend bit, once that curls around, come on, curl around. That's it, right. Now that little tiny Z bend bit, that's a bit that goes onto your carby, okay? It goes on that way like that. So someone has definitely been in. But that's what I do. I repair machines because, because other people have been fiddling. So, put a tank up there out of the way for now. Get a clean bit of rag. Cleaning carburetors, cleanliness, godliness. Okay, try and keep it as clean as you can. That's why I've got gloves on. You then want to put your tank down here. Down you come, and that's it onto the old bench. And you want to grab yourself a decent sized Phillips screwdriver. The, uh, the air, air um, intake um, crankcase breather pipe can come off. And let's just undo, there's five screws here. They're, they're Phillips, right? Undo these five. Now, when you put these back on, you ain't gonna hang on them, okay? Just do up a little tiny bit, and I shall show you the reason why in a little bit later on. They're not done on them, on them massively tight, so don't be using no impacts on here. You can run them down with an impact, but just kiss it, and then do it up by hand afterwards, yeah? Now the reason I want to check in here is not necessarily the carburetor and his cleaning, but the gasket and diaphragm could actually be broken, or more importantly, it's just got a load of muck in the bottom of the well, which I'll show you very shortly. So there's a carb, it just comes out like that. So take your screws out, because you want to keep hold of them. Don't lose none of your screws. And this gasket and diaphragm, it looks to be complete, in, as in 
it's not torn, but it just got, it's got an excessive bagginess to it. It just looks a bit baggy. See how that looks baggy? Yeah, it's just, it's all just a bit, a bit much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do away with that. Now, what I will say is, take your gasket off. Your gasket always goes on first, okay? And your, and your, sorry, your diaphragm. And then your gasket have gone under, have gone on top of that. But take your gasket off very, very gently. Don't tear it because you may need that a little bit later on. So very, very gently. Just get rid of that and put that to one side. Keep, keep your gasket. Do away with your diaphragm. Okay. So that's a carby off. It's easy. But inside here, as I can sh show you, just inside here, in the well, is absolutely full of crud, and that's that's your main issue. Your main issue is actually it's, it's trying to suck up all this dirt and crap and that's what's making the carburetor not run very nice it does come with a screen on here which generally don't come off but a pair of pliers on there will just lift that off and there's a main jet inside there and we want to clean that out so take that little tiny spring out do not lose it okay <clears throat> and then you've got a little tiny um screen filter here which they generally do get stuck on there okay sometimes they just come straight off other times they're a bit of a pickle so what I do, I get a pair of pliers, very gently, not much force, just get a bit of a twist, a bit of a twist up, and just loosen it. Sometimes they, they, they tear, and you can just cut them down, there it goes, this has gone now. I think, yeah, there it goes, so that's come off. It has torn a little tiny bit, but it's not the end of the world, okay? It's not the end of the world. Inside here is your main jet, just there. Now, I've got an air compressor, I'm very lucky to have one. Uh, not everyone does, but you can buy tins of compressed air. Uh, to to um to aid you with this, but what I will now recommend is that with with this far in to the carby, <coughs> it would be a, it would be criminal not to um not to clean it fully. You now want to get the smallest screwdriver you possibly own. Okay, the ones that you get in in glasses for repairing glasses, they're brilliant. And just here, you'll see there's a little tiny, tiny, tiny little cut out just there. You see it? You get your screwdriver, flathead, and just gently put it in. And you want to just prise that up. Now there's a little tiny o-ring underneath there, so don't go mad. So there's your there's your main jet. Now in there you can now clean through there, clean through this port. <coughs> if you clean through this port just here, and look at it like I am now, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get something straight in the face because when you spray into there, it come out of there. Okay, so you can pull this straw out as well if you want to. I don't necessarily do so unless there's lots of dirt behind here. But you can just pull that out and then press it back in. But I tend just to leave them be. Okay. So now I get my GT85 or carb cleaner or whatever choice you use. I also use stuff called Pocket Rocket, which is fantastic stuff. <clears throat> and now what I'm gonna do is just gonna clean through this carby, put a little bit in there. I wanna loosen that dirt up in there. Now what I said to you about spraying into here, you spray into that hole, you'll see it come out of the top of that straw. See? So don't ever look at it, look at it straight down the face because you'll get you'll get it right in the mush. So quite a good little carburetor clean there. That's running nice, we like that. A general tidy. Now there's a little tiny jet also, right down inside the, inside the throat, little tiny brass jet, just there, you see him? You wanna get in there and all. Just in there, and get, all, get onto it, yeah, there you go. Give that a good clean, that come out down the bottom of a carb too. And there's also one inside here, if you wanna go in here, but I'm not gonna bother. I think that'd be okay. Because it was priming well. So that's good, we're happy with that. We've got all the way down through here. Have a tidy, have a clean. Once you're happy with it, with the state of the carburetor, you can then blow it off with your air compressor, air, air compressor or compressed air can, whatever it is you have. Word of warning, if you're gonna compress it, just hold the primer bulb in, okay, and don't give it full force. Just a little a, a little bit of do ya, because you will blow that, you will blow that air o-ring right out, or that, that primer bulb right out. So don't go mad, okay? It will blow it out. So just a little tiny compressed air. If you blow that little tiny um bubble, a uh, little tiny O-ring out, that's had it. Also here, it'll blow it out of here as well. A little tiny ball ball bearing there. So yeah, don't have to go mad. Okay. So general clean. And that's a car be done. Put it to one side somewhere clean. The next thing you want to do is then just drop my main jet, is then clean this um, this well out, okay? Make sure you've got safety glasses on. And that can be compressed. And once it's compressed, it look, should look like something like that, a bit cleaner. 
Now you can go all out. I've got some dental picks. If I get anything really stuck in there, I'll clean up the dental pick, have a good scratch around in there, and then uh, sort that out. But that, that's cleaned it out successfully well. I'm quite happy with that. Just want to pick up the main jet I've just lost on the floor. And again, you want to compress that very gently. Don't go mad. All the holes, make sure it's all clean. And I'm happy with that. Now what you can do is you can now put your main jet back in. Now it will only go one way. If you find it won't, it won't go. It's because this little tiny collar, which is situated, uh, the best place to see it, down in here. It's a little tiny white, white or black collar down in here. If it doesn't go in, give the carburetor a bit of a shake and it will move it, okay? And it, as long as you've got it in place, it mine won't go in, okay? It won't go in full stop. It doesn't want to go in at all. So that's because my little tiny collar has just moved. So give a bit of a tap just to move that collar back and then you'll find it will just sit, in, sit into place. A bit more of a tap. It's got to sit just literally, just right. I think it's there. That feels about right, yeah, in it goes. Once it goes in, use the back of your screwdriver and just literally you hear it go click, like that. That's now in. Another quick little spray off, just in case I've introduced any dirt. I've got another quick little compress. So I've got dirt on my hands, you see. Right, we're happy with that. Carburetor can, get out, can now go away, okay, to, to one side. Now what you're gonna need is some gaskets and diaphragms. Now, what I will tell you, if it don't come in a packet similar to this, then it ain't genuine. Now, if you wanna cheap out, on gaskets and diaphragms, that's absolutely fine. You can get them for 199, right? But I guarantee you, like anything in the world, you only pay for what you get. And on Amazon, on eBay, everywhere like that, they all say, yeah, genuine blah, 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 blah. And we turn up in a lunchbox, in, in, in a lunch bag, right? If it don't have a Briggs and Stratton ticket on it, it ain't right. It's as simple as that, okay? So always message your, your, your seller to say, is it genuine? Yes, it is. Does it come in a genuine Briggs and Stratton pack it, no it doesn't, it comes in the envelope because I buy in bulk then they're, they're lying, okay? Um, get your gasket, which is the, the, the wiggly one, okay? That line's on, just line it up with the holes, uh, oh, uh, with the holes on your on your carby, just line it up, okay? It can, it can only go one way, you can't get it wrong. All right, that's on there. Now, you now wanna get your, um, your gasket Exactly the same, that goes on top just like so. Now what I said about that other gasket is when we're gonna put this carburetor now in place, um, you might find it leaks. If it does leak, you're gonna put the other gasket on top of that other gasket and what we call double gasket, um, then that will then do away the problem. You then wanna put your little tiny screen on and that little tiny spring, I said don't lose, that goes on that little tiny niblet just there, okay? So that's got to go onto there. Bump, right, that's on. Also, a quick little note also, if this hasn't got a little tiny plastic uh, ring and a, a rubber ring on here, you may find it up on your lawnmower on the intake just up here as well. So you need to fetch that and put that into, into position just like so as well, okay? Now it's all in place with your spring, with your, with your main jet, with your screen, you can now put the straw in the little tiny hole and just touch that down like so, okay? Now I can, now I can remove my gloves. And now you want to get your little tiny screws, five of them, and I don't force them in, just seat them. Just, just put them in loosely. Okay, because you don't want, you don't want to upset that gasket. Now, once you've got them all in, you know roughly where they are. What once one or two start to fall into place, you know you're there, you know you, you know you're golden. Then you get your Phillips, and same as like a head gasket, you're always going to do them up in a cross method or in a, in, a, in, a, in a separate method. So you go one over here. And you come back. Now, all I'm doing is just kissing these down. I'm not doing anything more than that. Just literally, just running them down, just to a touch. Okay, and we're going to come back and nick them up in a, in a tick. So use a cross-hatch method to bring the gasket down and um, diaphragm into place um, evenly. But now all the screws are all down. Bar this one, it's been a bit of a pickle. There it goes. Right, now they're all down. Now we can start just to nick them down. Now all you want to do is just a dab. Literally, just, literally, just nick them down. You don't want to go mad. If you go mad and you'll warp the carburetor, they're really looking for a 20 pound carburetor. That's it, okay? 
Right, now that's done, <coughs> we now want to test the carburetor to make sure it's tight and, and, and sort of it's sealed. So I'm gonna give the carburetor and tank a little clean. Very simply done. Now this is the important bit, okay? What I do is I get a little tiny, tiny piece of tissue paper or something similar. Just a small piece, nothing too, nothing too hefty. I screw that up into a little tiny ball and I put that into the carburetor back itself, into the back, okay? Opposite to the primer bowl, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is I'm gonna prime the carburetor now, but I don't want that petrol leaking out over the top because when you prime it, you may find it a leak. It's right in between that sandwich. You see that, see that, that um, carburetor tank of a ga gasket in the middle? Sometimes it leak out of there. So let's have a little prime. There you go, starting to prime. There you go, look. Now I have got just the smallest, I think, the smallest of air bubbles trying to come out, but it's not actually leaking. Just gonna, just gonna press that down just a touch. Touch at a time. If you go mad, it won't like it. Let's give it a little wipe. And again. I got it. Now if you over tighten it, what will happen is you'll walk, you'll walk that carburetor and then it'll just leak out the back. And that's when you'll take it back off again and that little tiny gasket that you saved earlier on, the used one, put that on top of the other gasket, okay? And double gasket it, then, then wind it down and it should hold it. Do not forget to remove your bit of tissue paper out the back of the carb. That bit's important. Now that's done, you can now put your crankcase breather pipe back on, fat end goes on the carb, easy, we can do that. And now we can go to mount this, um, this carburetor back onto the machine. Just gonna have a bit of a wipe down underneath here whilst the tank is off. Get rid of any, any excess dirt. Okay, that's good. So now remember what I said about, um, about that little tiny Z bend just here being on the tank. Well, that little tiny Z bend go through that big hole just on there. There's two holes, you've got one big, one little. Okay, it goes through the big one. So now I'm gonna hook that up onto my tank like so, and then that will then all slide into place over the intake, push the tank in. You need to get your little tiny 3.8 bolt. That goes on the front and just start that one off. Don't do it up just yet. You wanna get your little tiny half inch as well. And that's gotta go down in the side, just down here. You might have to push it in first just so it bites and then and then do it up. You can do it up by hand as well. Doesn't have to dump excessively tight, people, as long as it's home. That's good enough. So now what I like to do, I now like just to wipe down the whole carburetor, just to get rid of any excess oil that I've sprayed on the machine. So you want to be testing for leaks now. So double check that's all okay. There's a lot of tension on that spring now. I'm gonna bring that, bring that adjustment back to where it was. I'm gonna have to adjust it again later on. There's a lot of tension there now. I don't want it to be over revving. That seems to be doing its job. Just checking these springs, make sure they're not hooked up and, and uh, confused with anyone else because uh, that, that little tiny clip has run the wrong way, but it seems to be okay. So a quick little clean, make sure nothing's leaking. Air filter can go back on now. Onto the top, right way around. Point facing towards the back. And I want my little tiny flat edge screw. Clean that off because you don't want to put any dirt straight into the car, Brett, we just cleaned. That go down. Flathead driver. That go down. Like so. And that's it. That's how you overhaul a carburetor on a Briggs and Stratton Flathead Classic. So the next thing I'm going to be doing off camera is I'm going to be sharpening and balancing the blade. That's got to be done underneath. I'm going to be taking the oil out, which comes out of here with a flat-headed screwdriver. You can literally just put your screwdriver down. Oh, that's a Phillips mic. You can um, get your flathead driver, undo this one, just like a car, exactly the same as a car, right? Take it out. It's got a dipstick on it. You've got a reading. Mine says full up to the mark. That's where it says so it's safe to run it, but I should be doing an oil change on here anyway, okay? So I'll be sucking the oil out. You can just tip the lawnmower lawn on its side if you wish to do so, but just bear in mind, take your air filter off first, so you'll cover it in oil, so. Uh, it's got plenty of oil in there. I'm gonna change the plug, sharpen the blade, all that sort of stuff, get a good old tidy up. And when I come back, I'll meet you outside and we'll go for a little fire up and see if we haven't actually now fixed this little lawnmower that wasn't running originally. Just gone to remove the plug and in here we've got a NGKR BPMR7A. 
Belongs in a chainsaw swimmer, people. Not, not in a lawnmower. Put in a NGK B2 LM and you'll be golden. Right, okay. A little tiny cheapo mower. It's going to be, it's only going to be cheap. There's a bit of paint flake on there. But hopefully what's been, what's been done to it, it'll run now. Might have to adjust the speed, we should see. Dead man in. Let's see what happens. Yeah, a little tiny bit fast. Let's just uh, adjust that, just so we can get it to run about right. <coughs> Otherwise it'd just be red and it's red and it's absolute head off. So all you want, is a flathead screwdriver and a clamp. Now, I don't, don't recommend you do this how I do it. I'll do it with the engine running. But I've been working on machines since about the age of 11. But you guys and girls, if it's your first time, do it with the um, machine not running. All I'm gonna do is remove the air filter with my flathead screwdriver. So take that out. And that little tiny tab I showed you originally where that little spring went, all I'm gonna do is just push that towards the back of the engine. That's all I'm going to do. All right, I'm just going to fire it up now with the engine running. As I say, please don't do what I do. stops, cuts, does what it should do. Quick little carburetor clean, <coughs> new gas diaphragm, new spark plug, always been changed, blade sharpened and balanced, good to go. Nice little mower for someone for the season. Okay, so Briggs and Stratton uh, little sovereign mower now all up and running, does exactly what it should do. A nice little cheap mower for somebody because not everyone's got bags of money to spend. So a little cheap mower there, that'll do some of the season. It's got a new plug in it, new air filter, all changed, base sharp and balanced. It runs a sweet as a nut, carburetor clean and gasket and diaphragm, so golden. It really isn't worth spraying these decks up on these little tiny cheap ones because you're gonna lose money, so not worth doing. But there you go, it's done. If you like the video of Mixed Mows and Mower Man, hit your subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all about what you'll be told next time I upload another video. But until then, don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.